I'm going to explain uh, a typical oil system for a gas turbine engine and I'm going to use an image from Dale Crane's power plant textbook. Um, I found this to be an excellent textbook and uh, the image is, is actually quite good. Okay, so we'll start with uh, section one here. So this is this is the oil tank. So oil is stored in the in the oil tank, and it then flows by gravity down to the um, oil pump. The oil is pressurized by the pump, and then it flows through the filter. Okay, and the filter then prevents any dirt that uh, that may be in the oil from getting to the to the jets. Now what we need to be careful of is if the filter became clogged, you know, if it got um, you know a lot of debris in here, for example, if it got clogged, then the oil wouldn't be able to get through. So there is a filter bypass valve across the across the filter. So if it gets clogged the the pressure drop across here will be high and that will allow this valve to open so the oil could bypass the filter. Okay. Now that means there's dirty oil going to the bearings uh, which is not ideal but it's it's better than no oil going at all. So when this filter opens uh, a warning will go off in the in the cockpit uh, saying you know um, filter bypass valve is open um, land immediately. Well, the warning might won't say that, but the pilot will interpret it that way. So the the pilot will get an indication that the the filter bypass valve light has has come on. If the pressure of the oil uh, increases, you know, if the pressure is is too high, then we have a, a pressure relief valve here, and if the pressure is too high, the oil will just go back through the pump. Like that so it, it will just try and maintain a, a, a certain pressure. Okay, so the oil then, having come through the pump and through the filter, uh, in this case, and this is called a hot tank system, it would go to the fuel oil heat exchanger. Now, with a fuel oil heat exchanger, we have uh, hot oil going in and coal fuel. So let's imagine the coal fuel going in and radiating like this. So that's the coal fuel. So when the hot oil passes over that coal fuel, and, and they're all in se separate tubes, okay, so you, you can imagine if you like, um, you know, a, a tube of oil like this, and then a tube of uh, fuel there so that the hot oil is passing over the the cold fuel the cold fuel will reduce the temperature of the oil and the oil will increase the temperature of the fuel which is which is what we would like to have okay so the oil flows through the uh, fuel oil heat exchanger there is a temperature bypass valve you know if the oil is too cold will just go straight through and if uh, the uh, fuel oil heat exchanger gets blocked up then we'll get a pressure drop across here and this valve will open and allow the fuel to go to go this direction. Now this uh, configuration is called a hot tank system because the oil is hot in the tank so we have all this hot oil coming through before it goes into the oil cooler and then gets cooled. With a coal tank system, this fuel oil uh, heat exchanger would be located um, up up here. It would be somewhere up here. So in this case, we have the hot oil coming back. It would be cooled and then going into the tank. So that would be a coal tank system. But what I'm showing here in in this um, image is a hot tank system. So the oil is hot in the tank before it gets cooled um, later on. Having passed through the fuel oil heat exchanger, the oil will then go to the, the various bearings. 
So at this stage, maybe uh, we'll try and visualize the the crank or the I was going to say the crankshaft, but the actual shaft of the engine. So imagine the shaft of the engine going through here, going through the bearings there. So the oil then is delivered to uh, each of these bearings. And it first goes through these, these bearing filters and then on to the jets. So we get this jet lubrication of the, of the bearings and so on. Okay, so when the uh, oil hits the bearings, um, it's cool oil at the moment, hits the bearings, it then becomes uh, warm and the oil then gets taken back by um, a scavenge system. Okay, so uh, if we just follow the, here, the oil hits the, the bearing and then it drops down to a little area and we have these scavenge pumps. Okay, so the oil collected here and then goes through the scavenge pumps. Same here and then out through the scavenge pumps. So we, you can see in this diagram we've one, two, three, four, five scavenge pumps and only one pressure pump. And the reason we have a more scavenge pumps than pressure pumps is that when the oil hits the bearings, it, it gets hotter and therefore its volume expands. Plus the bearings uh, are generally in these uh, compartments where we have bleed air fed in across labyrinth seals. So the air become the oil becomes aerated. So we have a mixture of hot oil and air coming back through the scavenge pumps. So the volume has increased uh, uh, significantly. So once the oil comes back through this, the scavenge uh, pumps, it then goes back towards the sump. Now what's not shown here is a uh, uh, deaerator. So we want to be able to take the air out of the oil before it goes into the tank. So there will be a deaerator maybe somewhere along here. Takes the air out of the oil and then we have the hot oil going back uh, into the tank here. Now when the oil hits the, the bearings, um, let's assume that a bearing starts to starts to break up, you know, little bits of it begin to wear off. So we would get little bits of metal coming back um, in the the scavenge side. So you know can you can you just imagine some metal in the in the oil coming back through the, the scavenge side. So in the systems there will be a number of magnetic plugs. And these are called magnetic uh, chip detectors. So uh, again, just imagine we have this chip detector here. So it is it is a magnet. So if there is any uh, uh, metal in the oil, it will get attracted to the magnet. And eventually that buildup of metal will close a switch and that will put a light on in the, in the cockpit, um, giving the, the pilot a warning. Um, Again, he would interpret that as, you know, maybe land as soon as, as possible. So we'd have these magnetic chip detectors. They're generally at the lowest point of the, of, of the engine. Uh, there may be one or there may be multiple um, uh, chip detectors. Uh, but just know that they exist and they're just not shown on, on, this, on this image. Okay, so, so that's a, a typical oil system. So we have a tank through a pump, through a filter a fuel oil heat exchanger um, through a bearing filter onto the jets, taken from the jets back to the tank using scavenge pumps. Somewhere on the scavenge line we'll have metal chip or uh, magnetic chip dis detectors and just before the oil comes into the tank we'll have a deaerator to separate the air from the oil. So that's a gas turbine engine oil system.